what do we do to simplify this expression? That's, that's the directions that we're going to give you. Simplify this expression. What do you think, Seth? Add them all up. Okay, so Seth is suggesting that we add the 2 and the 3 and the 5 together. And then what do we do with the square root parts? Do the same. Add those all together too? So what do you guys think about that? If we do that, we get uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 5 is 10. And then on the inside, we're going to have 2 plus 3 is 5, uh, plus 2 is 7. We would have 10 square root of 7. You guys think that'll work? Five squared. Do you gotta put them in order? Five. Okay, Devante, what do you think? Square root of two. Is this like the terms combining like terms? It is. It's just like combining like terms. Um, in fact, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here. So uh, this this is combining like terms here. So when we're talking about square roots, what are the like terms? What do you think, Devante? Which terms do you think are like terms here? They have to be the same in both? No, like, how it has two twos and that's two threes, but they only have a five and a two. Like, would that be a way to... I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. I think you're on the right track, and I, I don't think you're quite saying exactly right, though. What do you think, Atlas? Yes, so the like terms are going to be the terms where the radicand is the same. So if you guys remember in the opener, I, th I think this was the problem in the opener, 2a plus 3b plus 5a. No, that wasn't the opener. But let's say we were doing this problem. Um, remember, this, the letter is called a variable, right? What's the number in front of the variable called? It starts with a c, but it's, not, it's the coefficient, right? It's actually the same as the number in front of a square root. Those are both called the coefficient. If we were going to add these together, we would add the 2a and the 5a together, and what we would do is we would add the coefficients, but keep the a the same, right? So here we would get 2a plus 5a is 7a. Well, we're going to do the same thing here, as Atlas said, when the radicands are the same, we're going to add the 2 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 2, and get what? What do you say, Cyan? 7 square root of 2. So just like when we were adding like terms with variables, we add the coefficients, or subtract if one of them is negative, and we keep the, the variable part the same. In this case, it's not a variable, but it's a square root. So now we're going to keep the square root part the same. So the square root of 2 is going to stay the same. We're not going to add the square roots. This is really important. Do not add the numbers inside the radicand together. You can't do that. All right, so we combine the 2 square root of 2 and the 5 square root of 2, and we get 7 square root of 2. Does anybody have any questions how we got that? Okay, so then what do we do with that 3 square root of 3? Can we add that on here too? No, exactly. We're going to bring it down. We can't add it together because it's not like terms. It's not a like term with the square root of 2. So it's going to be 3 square root of 3. And guess what? That's all you can do. You cannot add a square root of 2 to a square root of 3. And you can't add a square root of 2 to a square root of 5, or a square root of 7, or a square root of 11, uh, or really any other square root. Okay, so unless they're like terms, we can't add them together. Yes? So that's when, you go back and when, we, when we were combining like terms with variables, we, we made sure that we wrote them in a certain order. What kind of order did we write our answer in? Alphabetical order, right? So A, B, C, D, and, and so on. So we wrote our answer in alphabetical order. So we wrote A's before B's, B's before C's, and so on. Uh, when we're writing our answer with square roots, we want to write them in a, in a correct order. Um, and the order we're going to use is from smallest to biggest. So since the square root of 2 is smaller than the square root of 3, we're going to put the square root of 2's first, and then the square root of 3's. And then if we had square root of 4's, well, we wouldn't have square root of 4's. Why not? What's the square root of 4? Two, 4 is a perfect square, exactly. So we wouldn't have a square root of 4 because that would just be 2. Uh, but we might have a square root of 5, and that would come after the square root of 3. 
Okay, so we go from smallest to biggest when we're talking about uh, the order. All right, so go ahead and write this problem down. Now, I just told you that we can't add square roots together if the radicand is not the same. So does that mean that this right here is as simple as it's going to get? No. What can we do here? Alice? About saying you was right. Simplify what? Chris? Yes. So if, if the problem was just this, and I asked you to simplify the square root of 27. In fact, I did that in the opener, didn't I? If I asked you to do that, what would you do? You would start by making a factor tree, and we would say 7 is 9 times 3. This is the one Devante did, I think, right? Yeah. And then 9 is 3 times 3, and those are all prime. Yeah. So the square root of 27 is equal to the square root of 3 times 3 times 3, right? <laughs> okay, and we can go over to the square root of 18 and do the same thing. 18 is the same thing as... 9 times 2, 2 is prime, 9 is 3 times 3, so the square root of 18 is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 3. Now, should I put an equal sign in front of this? Plus. Yeah, good, Claire. So this needs a plus sign here, so what we're doing now is we're changing the square root of 27 to this, and we're changing the square root of 18 to this, but we'll keep the plus sign in there, so that plus sign stays. Now, I'm not done simplifying those, am I? What do I do next to simplify this? Circle the pairs. We have a pair of threes here. And so that's going to be equal to 3 square root of 3. All right, we already got that one in the opener, right? And what do we do here? Circle the pair of threes. And so what's that going to be? 3 square root of 2, and what do I put in between here? A plus sign. Now, can I add these together since I have a 3 out front here and a 3 out front here? What has to be the same for us to add them together? The inside, the radicand, right? So since the 3 is different from the 2, I cannot add these together. There is one more thing that I want to do, though, before I put a box around my answer. This is not quite finished. Uh, can anybody tell me why it's not quite finished? Alice? Nate? No? I mean, we do, but we have something else we want to do first. Atlas? Which one? We need to put it in order, exactly. So since 2 is smaller than 3, we want this term to go first. So we're going to just change the order here, and we're going to say this is equal to 3 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 3, just so we get the radicands in increasing order from smallest to biggest. Does that make sense? So these two square roots we cannot add together, but... If I'm asking you to simplify, you still have to simplify each one by itself. So we couldn't add them together because they weren't alike when we started, but we went ahead and simplified them um, and, and wrote it in its simplest form. Any questions about that one? All right, let's do another one then. Ooh, that one looks tough. So I'm asking you to simplify this expression. Um, just like the last problem, what do you think the first thing we're going to do is? Since, since none of the radicands are the same right now, we can't combine them, what can we do? We won't have to do all of them, and you'll see why in a second. I see it. What do you think, Jesse? Well, okay, we are going to have to factor some of them. So let me, let me ask this first. Will we need to factor, say, this one? One, it's a perfect square, right? So 
since 100 is a perfect square, 10 times 10, right? 10 squared. Since 100 is a perfect square, we don't have to do the factor tree. And 16 is a perfect square also, isn't it? We don't have to do the factor tree. We can. You'll get the same answer if you do the factor tree, but we can save ourselves a lot of work if we don't, if we recognize those are perfect squares. Now, since 8 and 32 are not perfect squares, we'll have to factor those. So let's do that real quick first. Uh, how does 8 factor? 4 and 2, and then 2 and 2. Okay, so as Claire said, 2, 2, and 2. The 100, we'll, we'll skip over that. Um, how about the 32? That's 8 and 4, right? And then 8 is 2 and 4, and then 4 is 2 and 2. Claire, I think you got one too many there. Should end up with five twos. Okay, so when we factor those, we, we get that. Uh, we get 2 times 2 times 2 for the 8, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 for the 32. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this whole expression. The square root of 8 is going to become what? The square root of 2 times 2 times 2. The square root of 100 is really the same thing as the square root of 10 squared, right? It's not the square root of 10, but it's the square root of 10 squared. If you wanted to, at this point, you could write a 10 in there and just say, well, I know the square root of 100 is 10, and, and we'll go on. Um, you don't have to show your work for that one. Uh, the square root of 32, oh, and I put a plus there. I should have put a minus, right? The square root of 32 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You've got five of them in there, right? Minus the square root of 4. 4 squared. Not 4, but 4 squared. You don't. Hmm? Oh, okay. All right, so let's go through and simplify each one of these. Um, the first one, the square root of 8 which is now the square root of 2 times 2, we have a pair of 2's there. So what are we going to do with that? Circle our pair of 2's, and what do we get on the outside? Two. And what do we get on the inside? Two. All right, what is the square root of 10 squared? Two. 10. How about the next one here? We have a pair of 2's and a pair of 2's. I'll even let you skip a step here. So on the outside, we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4. That's going to be 4 square root of 2. And finally, the square root of 4 squared is 4. Why do you say 4 square It's a good question. So here we had a pair of 2's that's going to go on the outside, right? And another pair of 2's that's going to be on the outside. So on the outside, we're going to have 2 times 2, which is 4. And then that 2 that didn't get circled is left over. All right, now I'm going to make myself a little bit more room here. Alice? Okay, good. We're going to combine the like terms. Now, let me ask this. If we want to go in the correct order from smallest square roots to biggest square roots, what do you think we should do first? The terms with the square roots on them or the terms without? Remember, we want to go from smallest to biggest. The thing is here, we have some that don't have any square roots on them. We have the 10 and the negative 4. What do you think, Seth? Without, exactly. So since we're going from smallest to biggest, we're going to do the ones that are, are the smallest, uh, that don't have any square root on, on them at all. So we're going to start with the positive 10 and the negative 4. What is positive 10 plus negative 4? Six. Or 10 minus 4? It is 6. And we have the 2 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 2. What is 2 minus 4? Two. Negative 2. And we need to be sure we remember our square root of 2 on there. And that right there is our answer. That's way too much. Oh, it's not that bad. I thought this was the easy one. Right. It wasn't any harder than the last one, was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used the two space. <laughs>
if you need a little more space for this last one, I, I noticed um, a couple of people who used a lot of space there. Go ahead and use the back of your notes for this one. I want to change the problem here just so that it, it's so we get a problem like this one. You'll see what happens here in a minute. It's not a difficult one. This step together. Um, so the first step, we're going to do a factor tree for both of these. So we're going to put an equal sign then and rewrite it. Instead of the square root of 12, we're going to write the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. And instead of the square root of 27, we're going to write plus, plus the square root of 3 times 3 times 3. Okay? Then we need to find our pairs there. I see a pair of 2's here, which means we're going to have what on the outside? And what on the inside? And over here I see a pair of 3's, so we're going to have what on the outside? And what on the inside? And finally, can I combine these? Why? Because the insides on both of them have three, the radicands are the same, so we can combine them. And what do we get when we do two square root of three plus three square root of three? Five square root of three. Man, that was hard. Yeah, it was tough, wasn't it? Don't forget to box your answers. <laughs> Any questions about that one? So. I want you to write down the steps to doing these problems. And I want you to write down these steps so that you can use these notes and, and come back to them as a reference if you need them when you're working problems or even when you're doing a <laughs> quiz or a test. Um, so the first thing we're going to do when we're adding or subtracting square roots is we're going to simplify all the square roots completely. Then we're going to add terms together that are like terms. Uh, and those are going to be the terms with the same radicand. And then we want to make sure that when we write our final answer, we look at the terms, uh, look at the radicands and write them in increasing order, which means from smallest to biggest.